I was burnt out. I was $250,000 in student debt. I was drinking caffeine almost on an IV, late nights, or early mornings, lots of stress for the demands of deadlines and testing and wanting to do very well and learn the material, not getting the best sleep, the circadian rhythm was disrupted. And ultimately my wife was pregnant with twins and she had to go on bed rest, the gym, working out, taking care of myself. And here I am waking up exhausted, tired, can't focus, crash in the middle of the day. I don't have libido, I don't have motivation, I don't have drive. I, I have a lot of brain fog. I don't wake up feeling recharged. I, I have anxiety and I don't handle stress very well. And if someone comes behind me, I'm, I'm on my toes and I'm almost panicky. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's going on with me? And so I went to a bunch of different doctors and they told me, probably like you know, that my blood tests are normal. There's nothing wrong with my blood tests. They're, they're completely normal. That I uh, need to just relax and recover. It, if they want, they can prescribe to me uh, anxiety medication or antidepressant depression medication. And I knew I wasn't, well, I was anxious, but I didn't want to take a pill for it. And I knew I wasn't depressed. And that just didn't really sit well with me. And on top of that, I, I was also marginalized and, and, and not believed and wanting to be passed out of the office. And around the same time, this term adrenal fatigue got on my radar. And when I read through it, it, it was like an epiphany. I had never heard of this before. Had it. And, I, and now I heard this thing called adrenal fatigue. It just scribes me to a T. And I went to the doctors and they told me there's no such thing as this thing that it is an internet diagnosis and that uh, it, when you tell them that you have an adrenal fatigue problem, they, they, they look at you like, oh, here's one of those difficult clients. They're reading the internet. Or maybe you do get a doctor that helps you, which I didn't at the time, but they will give you a reductionistic approach and just feed you with a bunch of supplements and take this supplement or take that supplement or do this diet or do that diet. And, and you're not seeing the proof in the pudding, you're not getting better. So I made it my mission to go down those rabbit holes and I thought if I don't know about this and it's a stress related illness or a stress related condition and we're under and bombarded by so many stresses on a day to day basis, how many other thousands and hundreds of thousands and quite frankly millions of people are suffering with a fatigue based problem no matter what you call it. I learned so many things and it wasn't until I learned about the concept of oxygen and how we use oxygen. Because when you go down those rabbit holes, you see that there's an HPA axis dysfunction, your brain triggers to your adrenals, and the mechanics get, get wonky, if you will. Thyroid gets involved, you, you know you have gut health issues, maybe there's an Epstein-Barr virus issue, or Lyme disease, or mold, or heavy metals, or you're gluten reactive, and, and you're told to eat a lot of meals throughout the day so that you stabilize your blood glucose, that your saliva tests were low, so you need more cortisol levels uh, to go higher, so you take these supplements. And it becomes very reductionistic, and it becomes whack a mole where y y you're not really getting to the root cause of the problem. And one of the aha moments that I had was, you know what, Joel, I learned that basically there's this danger response in the body where it's called cell danger, where if you don't have enough energy to meet the demands of what you need to do on a daily basis. Your body makes important shifts and sacrifices and it, it runs certain systems in your body at the expense of other systems. And that's called cell danger. And ultimately what happens is you, you have overactive immune system, you have a depletion of your, of your minerals, and you ultimately don't utilize oxygen effectively. You oxidize it. And oxidation means that it's combining with other things in your body and it's destroying those things like rust or an apple, you bite it, it turns brown. That's oxidizing or cars left to the elements, it's oxidizing. And when that happens, you're, you're creating a, a demand in your body and you're not creating a supply. And it's really that easy. And ultimately, no one is teaching you this. They're not teaching doctors this. They're not teaching, they're not putting it in the curriculum. They, the environment with the minerals and the glyphosates in the soils and um, in with the medications that are out in the world and just all the stressors that we have. That was a game changer for me. When I learned that, hey, our body 
is designed to make energy most effectively when we use oxygen. When we combine the food we eat and the air we breathe into ATP, which is energy, and water. And the reason why we have an, uh, an epidemic of people being exhausted and tired and burnt out is because they haven't been able to switch that metabolic switch.